Hello, hello. Okay. We settle down out there a little. Okay. Welcome to social engineering, which, uh, thank you, which uh, we traditionally do on Sunday because a lot of corporate people like to come just for that and we want them to pay full price. Uh, <laughs> seriously, people come here at, at 355 from AT&T and they pay 50 bucks for the weekend just to see this one panel. And we don't want to disappoint them. <laughs> so uh, we're going to, uh, we're going to, of course, be talking about uh, what social engineering is uh, with our esteemed panel here. And we're also going to attempt to make some calls like we like to do sometimes. Keep in mind, though, this is uh, pretty well unplanned. Uh, we have a couple of things lined up that uh, may work or may not work. But understand, with any attempt at social engineering, it could fail completely. So it's, it's very nerve-wracking. We want to do something cool. We want to be successful and get information we're not supposed to be able to get. But it could fail. We could get nothing. We could get yelled at. We could have the cops called on us. We don't know. Uh, let's start by, um, by introducing everybody on the panel. Over to my right is Cheshire Catalyst. And to my immediate right, Kevin Mitnick. You know me, and to my left is Bernie S. Good evening. I want to start just by asking Kevin, since he's the, uh, the master social engineer, of, according to all the authorities, what is social engineering? Well, it's uh, basically using deception manipulation and influence techniques to get people to say yes to what you want them to do. Uh, for example, giving you a piece of information or doing some sort of action that creates a security hole that you could exploit later. So I guess that's a reasonable definition. Whenever there's humans involved, it seems like uh, there's going to be a weakness someplace. And as long as human beings are involved, you'll be able to get information that you're not supposed to get from them. And that's really what social engineering is all about. What you do with it beyond that point, that's really up to you. You know, you might just be trying to get, uh, uh, get some information that will be an advantage to you somehow. Uh, or you might be trying to do something more nefarious, you know, lie, steal, cheat, whatever. Um, we're here just to demonstrate and talk about how easy it is to get people to tell you things they really shouldn't be telling you. Maybe we can um, just give a couple of examples from the past as to uh, what we're talking about. Things that have happened. You guys have any uh, any stories you'd like to relate? I Actually, never did it before. So that's never did it before. <laughs> well, some of what social engineering is is getting to be places where maybe you're not supposed to be. Um, I used to have uh, a series of things I called Operation Backdoor, where I would find my way into the backstage area of various concerts and things. And the Smothers Brothers were coming to town uh, way back in the 60s. And uh, they were great heroes of mine, as was their political pundit, Pat Paulson, who I actually voted for president a number of times. Um, <laughs> so I'm uh, underground in the War Memorial Auditorium of Rochester, New York, with my good friend. And we're waiting for people to come around, because you're supposed to be there very early. The locals think you're from out of town. The out-of-towners think you're local. Nobody knows who you are. And you're running around with a clipboard, so you must be official, right? So, we're coming around this corner, and we see down the long corridor just underneath the stage, this fellow coming towards us, and behind him, the guard following him. So this fellow comes up to us, and I say to him, hi, I guess you're not supposed to be here either. He takes this in, says, oh, uh, yeah, I guess so. OK, come with me. And we step into the dressing room right there. Uh, I tell him, sit down. You, the, the kid who's walking up, you start fiddling with your camera, Al, and I whip out a little booklet from the back of my clipboard, start reading this, and I start scribbling on my clipboard. The guard gets to the dressing room, looks in, and I say, hi, may I help you? <laughs> oh, oh, no, that's okay. And off he goes. And a, a funny other story about the clipboard is um, there was an inmate that was incarcerated at Leavenworth uh, USP, United States Penitentiary, and he got some street clothes while he was in custody, grabbed a clipboard, and then walked around uh, the facility, and the guards were letting him through anything because he was, it looked official like he was carrying a clipboard, and he walked out right to a taxi cab at the outside of the prison entrance and just took a, a cab, and that's how he escaped. It's a true story. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, in an ironic twist, this panel itself would not be possible uh, 
to, to have today without social engineering. There is a crucial piece of equipment. We have here a telephone patch, which allows us to tie the phone line audio into the PA system. It's a special kind of hybrid patch. And uh, I had about eight boxes of equipment I had to haul up here from Philadelphia. And uh, I'm so tired, I forgot to pack that box. So I got up here uh, a couple days ago and uh, just realized yesterday I didn't have the box with the phone patch in it. And uh, it's a long drive to Philadelphia and back. I was already exhausted. So uh, I called a friend in Philadelphia, had them go over to my apartment, get it, and uh, uh, called Amtrak. And they assured me that they could use a service called Pack Package Express to put it on a train from 30th Street Philly up to uh, Penn Station over here. So um, how do you use some social engineering just to get the equipment on the train? Because uh, they said, it can only be certain items. What is it you're shipping? I said, it's a piece of electronic equipment. It's like, oh, we don't, we don't allow electronic equipment to be shipped. So well, why not? They said, well, we don't know what it is. It could be a bomb or something. Like, OK, well, what is acceptable? And they said, clothing, food, that sort of thing. So I called back again and said, uh, I need to ship a piece of uh, clothing with some books to New York. And uh, they said, OK. And I gave them my information. And they told me to be on a train that night and to be here this morning at uh, 10 AM. So, uh, it came, uh, it came on the train. It got up here. I went over to the, to the station to get it after 10 o'clock. And uh, the office was closed. The door was closed. And, they, and I talked to a security guard. They said, no, they're not open until Monday. I said, well, I was told that Monday morning, it, uh, Sunday morning I could pick it up. They said, well, it's closed. You can't get anything. So I'm like, what am I going to do? So uh, I looked at the counter where you're supposed to actually pick it up, where the security guard wasn't. I'm like, what am I going to do? So I went back to the hotel. I had this, t this uh, nice polo shirt from the National Security Agency. I put that on. Uh, came over with my, uh, came back to 30th Street with this uh, two-way radio we're using for communications here at the conference, and uh, walked up to the counter directly. I said, we have an urgent package from Philadelphia. It's urgent. We get it immediately. And I just spoke with a stern tone of voice, with a shirt, with an emblem, and the radio. And the guy behind the counter is like, yes, sir. What can I do for you, sir? Come right back here, sir. <laughs> and... Uh, And it's, one of the biggest challenges in social engineering is not to lie if you can help it. So I didn't tell any lie. I just said, this is an urgent security issue. Um, I'm, I didn't say I was the National Security Agency. He let me right back there. He said, whatever you need, sir, just pick out whatever you need. And uh, I'm looking at all these, there's all these packages. I said, uh, all right, this is the one I need. He said, do I, say, do I, do I need to sign anything? No, sir, it's, it's yours. And so I just left with the box. I could have walked out with anything from, package, from Amtrak uh, Package Express. So. You know, if you need anything there, <laughs> just wear the white clothing. <laughs> Unbelievable. You didn't hear that here. Uh, <laughs> they're a block away, Bernie. <laughs> hey, hey, Bernie, I remember. See you off the exits. Hey, hey, Bernie, I remember a similar thing where I, uh, I don't know, it was about a decade ago, and I went into a courthouse to get uh, somebody's file. And I went up to the court clerk, and I was dressed in a suit. I was wearing my two-meter HT radio. And she handed me the file, but also another document that said sealed record with it. And she thought I was some sort of law enforcement or a court officer. So I got a copy of the sealed record without even asking, because she perceived me to be an authority based on the suit and the HD. It's supposed to be sealed. OK, well, let's, uh, let's have a little fun here. Um, fast food, that's always my favorite, because you get all kinds of crazy reactions from people. Um, we're going to try something today. Uh, this is what I call the multi-step social engineering uh, exercise here. And that's where you go one step at a time and get more information each time you make a phone call until you have a lot of information to prove that you're entitled to the information that they give you at the end or the action that you make them do at the end. Um, so we're going to, our target today is going to be Taco Bell. Um, <laughs> Um, I, I need a little help here. Does anybody know where they're headquartered, where their corporate headquarters is? Anybody? Irvine, yeah. Irvine California? Thank you very much. You see, it's, it's good to have this information handy. Okay. Great. Um, my name for this exercise is going to be Scott Williams, so uh, don't be confused if you hear me call myself that. I'm going to pick up the phone, and hopefully there won't be ghastly feedback when I do. There's no dial tone. What just happened?
dial 1, then the area code and the seven digit number to complete your call. Favor de marcar el uno después. All right, I forgot. Who's the dialing his cell phone? Microphone, please. Okay. I forgot. Uh, in this city, you have to dial the full 10 digit phone number. I forgot that, okay? I'm from Long Island. We still have seven digit phone numbers out there. Okay, let's try that one more time. Sorry. Uh, yeah, hi, this is Taco Bell. Yeah, this is Taco Bell. Uh, hi, this is Scott Williams. I'm calling from the Village Voice. We're compiling a list of local restaurants, and we just needed to have your store number. Do you have that? Uh, which store number, sir? Yes. Which one? Uh, the, uh, I think it's a four-digit number. Uh, our four For the location. I'm sorry. Sorry, sir? For the location of your store. Sir, we are location in uh, 150 Street, Broadway. I, I know the address. It's just uh, we need to. We're compiling a list of the store number. Uh, that this Taco Bell number. Uh, you should have a four-digit number. Say so the four-digit number is uh, uh, Broadway, right? At three six four five. Uh, that's the address, but uh, you have. I think it's printed on the receipts. Uh, it's the franchise number. Uh, one minute. I check on my franchise number. Thank you. But his manager's not here. If you would like to call tomorrow. Uh, well, you should have that information today. It should be there. Um, we're printing tonight, so we need to get that information now. Uh, so because his manager is not here at this time. Is, right. is, is the manager there? The manager is not here today. The manager is not there. Yeah. Can you look on a receipt, and it, it should say Taco Bell number 123 or something like that. So it's, uh, my Taco Bell is uh, insured. Uh, it's a 786. Like that, I thought I don't know about anything, right? 786? Yeah, 786. That, that's the store number, 786. Yeah. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, bye. All right. I mean, that's really nothing. We got a store number. We can probably get that by looking at a receipt. But it adds credibility to the next call, uh, assuming he didn't give me the wrong information. Uh, where we where we say that uh, we we want to do something involving a store number and we know the format of the store number. Uh, we're going to call another one just to kind of verify that information and uh, hopefully get more information as well. Uh, let's see, I have a number here. Sorry, do I have to do that thing again? What the fuck? It is hard. Hello? Yes. Uh, yes, hi, this is uh, Scott Williams from Taco Bell Central Irvine. Um, did someone uh, call us concerning a problem with cash registers? From here? Yeah, we had a call from store 786, was it? 786? What's your store number? My store number? Yeah. You, you call KFC Taco Bell? Uh, we're calling uh, the we're calling store 786. That's what we were told that there was a problem with the cash register. What what? Um, I don't call. I'm the manager. You're the manager, and you didn't call. Okay, it's possible we got the wrong store number. Uh, what is your store number? My store number one six three something. One six three eight. Uh, one six three eight two. One six three eight two. No, that's that's definitely wrong. Three thirty one KFC Taco Bell Fort. Okay. Uh, can you tell us uh, the model of your cash register? Because that would help us find out. I'm par. Sorry. I'm sorry, say that again? It's a par register. Uh, spell that, please. Par, par. Are you calling from par? Par? Can you just... Par, P-A-R. Where are you calling from? Par. Uh, no, that's a, different, that's a different brand than what we're... We're calling for the um, uh, CRS. CRS? Yeah. No. Cash register service. No, no, no. We don't have any contract. Okay, either. we must have gotten the wrong information. But you okay. have you have a par register, is that correct? Yeah. yeah. 
Okay. All right. Thank All you for the information. Oh, you too. Bye. All right. So, you see, it's nothing spectacular. We're just getting little bits and pieces of information. Now, we, I, I believe he gave us the right information, store 16382. That makes more sense, because I think there are 16,000 Taco Bells <laughs> around. And we know the name of the cash register now. We know it's a PAR cash register. So, um, we're going to try, um, we're going to try one more uh, and see if we can get them to do something fun based on this information. And again, this may not work. This is uh, unscripted, untested, uh, and someone's picking up our phone. <laughs> okay. It's you. Okay. Yeah, I think somebody's calling us. I think that's the problem. Uh, I'm going to call one last, uh, last number here. Okay, I've got a number there. I dialed the wrong number. I'm going to have to hang up. Sorry. Sorry. Don't have a dial tone. Okay. Pizza again. Let's take him out you. Uh, yes, hi. This is Scott Williams calling from uh, Talk About Irvine. Okay. Uh, we're calling concerning a problem with the cash register that uh, you might be experiencing. Yeah, somebody already called. I gave them the information they need about the loaner that we have and the, the actual ratio that we have. Uh, somebody already called? Yeah. Okay. That was uh, like maybe uh, 30 minutes ago. Okay. Was, uh, was this uh, for a, um, a PAR a cash register? PAR? No, no, not PAR registers, no. Okay, what, what kind of cash register did you have? And uh, C, C, I, C, E, R, something like that. I have to go upstairs and then check it. Could you do that for me? Okay, one second. Thank you. It requires patience sometimes. Thanks for being so patient. Okay. There's there's a mute switch, so I guess we can talk while while he's running upstairs. Um, so basically, he's going to check the um, the CAS register model, and I'm still thinking in my head what I'm going to ask him to do. <laughs> so hopefully, he'll do it. Change prices? I don't know about that. It's been a, <laughs> it's been a franchise. I honestly don't know. Who, Price decrease. Maybe they, they've been having cash register problems. This happened to us uh, with Starbucks last time. I think we, we called up and they were having network problems when we asked. Okay. People are feeding us information here. Hello? Hello? Yes. Okay, I, I got one loaner, which is a Casio CR1000. Okay, the Casio. Mm -hmm. All right, and it was the 1000 you said? Yes. Okay. That's the Who one am I that, speaking uh, to? Sorry? Who am I speaking with? You're speaking to Junior, the GM of the store. Junior? Yes. Okay, hi Junior, this is Scott Williams. Okay. Uh, this is what I'm going to need you to do. Uh, what time is your franchise open until tonight? Until 11 today. Until 11. Yes. Uh, we need to run an upgrade. It's going to require that you not run the register for five minutes. Uh, let me see what we can... Uh, are, are these registers connected to our phone jack? Uh, it's, uh, what happens is it's connected through, um, uh, through the phone lines. It's, you don't see the actual connection into the cash register, but they, we do provide software updates. And the problem you're having is probably because of a firmware upgrade that you didn't get. Oh, okay. And what we need to do is we need to send that to you tonight so that your day-end totals will register properly. Otherwise, it could be a problem Monday morning. Beautifully. So, I mean, we stop, we close the doors at 11. Okay. And, we, you know, we're still here cleaning or whatever. So after 11, you could do whatever you need to do. Well, that's just it. You see, we're not there at that time. We're out in California. And uh, 
and we go home uh, at about seven. Oh, about seven hours. Yeah. Time. So the latest we can do this is six our time, which is nine your time. So what I'm going to ask you to do is just for a five minute. It's actually closer to two minutes, but just to be safe, if for five minutes you could just not use the register, say from nine o'clock to nine o five. So nine o five. If you could just do that for us, that ought to clear up the problem. Just don't touch the register for five minutes. Okay. At that time, at nine o'clock exactly our time, we'll stop taking orders until nine o five. Exactly. And, All right. And uh, at nine o five, probably at nine o four, but just to be safe, let's say nine o five. Okay. Now the Casio, the the Casio one that I gave you, that's the loaner. The actual razors that we use are the CRS three thousand. You have the CRS three thousand. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's going to be getting the upgrade as well. What we're going to do is we're going to send that that firmware upgrade down the line. It should affect all of your cash registers so that they'll all be in sync and so that there won't be any, any communication issues between them. And that's, that's what the problem is that you've been having. Oh, okay. So if for just five minutes, you can shut that down. If for, you can just shut that down for five minutes. Uh, you can still take orders, but just don't ring them up, all right? If you just have, um, you can take the orders, but I make the food and all that, but just don't actually touch the register for five minutes. For five minutes. Yeah, we could, we could manage that, no problem. Okay. And just so we're synced, uh, what time do you have now? Um, right now it's 4.29. 429? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what we have. Uh, we've got uh, 129 here. Okay, so um, we appreciate your help. Uh, Junior, was it? Yes, Junior. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you very much. All right, good luck. Yeah. Um, if anyone is interested, they can go to um, 18... East 14th Street at 5th Avenue around 9 o'clock. <laughs> Please, somebody go with a video camera and, and place a big order and just see what they do. I'm, I'm very curious. <laughs> Who, who's got a story while I recover from that? We could. We could have asked them to uh, just don't worry about customers during that time period. Uh, corporate authorizes you to give give the food away just for that five minutes period of time. But if we, but, but, but if we did that, we'd have been committing some kind of a... Well, there's that, but there's also you want, to, you want to maintain that level of trust. You notice he was not suspicious at all. For, I was saying some pretty bizarre things to him about different... I didn't know anything going in there. I didn't even give him the store number. I didn't know what brand register he had. I didn't know anything about uh, how they were set up. These things aren't connected by phone line, I'm pretty sure, but I was able to convince him that they were somehow. So he's going to instruct his staff not to touch th things for a five minute period. I mean, you know, this is a relatively harmless prank, but you can get people to do all kinds of things. You can get people to close the store for a period of time, send people home. You know, it's. Hey, you know, it'd be I shouldn't have the, any of this information. Emmanuel, it would be interesting if you find a restaurant that has, uh, if, you don't, if you don't get a receipt, your meal is for free. And you call them up and you use some sort of pretext. So uh, they won't give anybody a receipt for a certain period of time. So then you know when you go in and get a free meal, right? Okay. <laughs> so, there, there, there are, you know, malicious but ways of doing things and non-malicious ways of doing yeah. things. What I, <laughs> <laughs> what I like to do is I like to, you know, establish a relationship with the person. I, I asked him what his name was. We became friends. Junior, I'm Scott. You know, thanks very much for your help. You know, and also the hint of trouble if he doesn't do what I say. Uh, there could be trouble Monday morning. So uh, please cooperate or else. But, you know, said in a nice way so that, uh, you know, he, he, he believes that uh, he's doing the right thing. And, you know, okay, it's going to be a little inconvenient, but there's no real harm done. Also, you should always have a plan for backing out of these things, too. If he calls your bluff, have a phone number ready to give him. That sounds legitimate. Have a way of, uh, of explaining why you're saying something that makes no sense at all. Things like that. Most of the time, though, you don't get questioned as long as you maintain that, um, that air of authority. It can be tough to, uh, to gain that confidence, but once you, uh, once you practice a few times, I think it works. Uh, how many people have read Kevin's book, uh, The Art of Deception? I can't recommend a better book on how social engineering works than, than this book here. It's written for companies mostly so that they can, uh, they can protect themselves, but also there are some ingenious plots in there, uh, plots and schemes to uh, get information, including I think one where you actually would you classify out, those as malicious or non-malicious? <laughs> well, it depends. <laughs> I mean, you know, I don't think that's malicious at all. I think you're, you're telling people how to exercise the system. It's, it's what you do with the information afterwards. Right, that's um, true. But basically, I think there was one instance where you were able to actually figure out how a bank would transfer money to somebody without any kind of authorization whatsoever. How would something like that work? Oh, I think you're talking about check systems, which I'll, I'll get, I, I want to tell you a favorite one that was pretty funny. It still has me laughing today. Is uh, Many years ago, 
I was in uh, Digital Equipment Corporation's EasyNet, and that was a worldwide network, like Suns, Swan, Dex was EasyNet. And uh, they, had a, they had DeckNet protocol, and I was looking for a program, a, a piece of commercial software, since there was nothing free or shareware, where I could pretty much put a sniffer on one of the, one of the nodes in the network so I can capture uh, clear text traffic, you know, albeit like passwords and stuff like that, so I could spread you know, throughout the network easier. So I did some research, and I found that a company called uh, Bear Computer Systems had an office in Los Angeles, and I actually was living in LA at the time. This is when I was a teenager. So I did a little bit of research based on my uh, phone freaking knowledge, and I found out that this company was actually run out of this guy's house in Toluca Lake, California. So I did a little bit of research, and I found out all the phone numbers that were terminating at that residence, in other words, how many phone lines they had, and they had like three. One was a regular line for voice, and there was two that had dial-up uh, well, modems attached. So I went to uh, VT1, my VT100 terminal, dialed up to these modems, and I noticed the behavior of the system on the other end was a VMS system that was asking, that would be, uh, it would beep at you, which meant it was looking for a system password before it would give you a login prompt. So I thought about the problem for a while, and I was thinking, well, maybe what I'll do is I'll add call forwarding to those two phone numbers, forward it to a system that's under my control, and then when someone would dial in, they wouldn't be logging into the real system, it would be the decoy system, and I'd be able to capture the person's username and password. But I figured, this is such a small company, it's run out of this guy's house, there's probably two or three employees, I can't call the guy at home and say, hey, I'm another employee, because he, you know, that obviously wouldn't work. So I thought about another method of doing it. Instead of call forwarding the dial-in number, because it was unlikely that customers would dial in, it would be more likely that he would dial in from when he was outside the office. So around that same time, DEC was releasing security patches because there were so many holes found in the VMS operating system that you can, they set up an 800 number that anybody can call and, they would, and you just give them your name and address and they would send you a box with, and you could pick the media, it was either nine, you know, mag tape or uh, a cartridge tape, and you'd have the latest security patches rolled up onto the tape. So I found out you can call the number, they didn't even verify you're a customer. You can just say, hey, my name's Joe Blow, my address is such and such, I need 10, 10 kits, 10 patch kits. And then and they would ship them out, Federal Express, the next day. So I ordered 10. So I took the, the box out of the tape, I put it into a VMS system that I had access to, and I rolled back the patch. In other words, VMS had a special format of how they would store these patches in what they called backup save sets. So I'd unravel it, like unzip it if it was like WinZip, for example. And what I decided to do is I'd put in a special Mitnick patch of my own. And what that patch was, it was to the program that act, acted as the system's gatekeeper called login out. It's like, it's, a, it's like bin login in Unix or Linux. And I had a special patch that uh, I could log in with a special password and I'd essentially be invisible. So I, I included this patch, I rolled it back up onto the system and then I wrote it back to the cartridge tape because I could write to it. Then I went and I put this tape back into its plastic shipping bag with a shipping label, because I actually had a printed copy of what, what was being shipped, I went over to a friend's office and had that shrink wrapped. Packaged it back in the box. Then I was thinking, oh, okay, now, I'll, now I'll, all I have to do is drop this package in the mail, and then when they get it, they'll install my special patch. So I was thinking about this, I was in LA, and DEC, all their stuff came out of either Colorado or Massachusetts. And I wasn't about to fly to Colorado or Massachusetts or mail it to somebody else to mail for me. So my next step was to go to a costume shop. So I went to a, and, and this is Hollywood, right? Uh, this is Los Angeles, so there's a lot of uh, costume shops for the you know, motion picture industry. And I got a UPS uniform, right? So I get a UPS uniform, I get the UPS hat, and I get the clipboard that Cheshire is so, uh, uh, it's one of his favorites. And uh, around 7.30 in the morning, we show up at, the, at this uh, company's house, knock on the door, the guy stumbles you know, to the door because I think it uh, kind of woke him up. And he goes, can I help you? I go, yeah, UPS, we got this uh, priority package for you. No, can you please sign? And I was rushing the guy and I was actually trying to step inside the house or the apartment inside the doorway so the guy wouldn't look outside. 
Now, does anyone know why I didn't want the guy to look outside? No truck, <laughs> exactly. So, so the guy never looked outside. I had to wait a, about two weeks before the guy installed the uh, security update, and it, and it worked. But uh, it was kind of interesting because I was always concerned about what, how do you solve the problem of not having the truck? But it worked. <laughs> so, whatever. So beware of the UPS man or FedEx man bearing gifts. It may be a Trojan. <laughs> uh, another effective tool in social engineering is, well, a, a couple of effective tools. One is stupidity, acting stupid yourself. People give you more information that way. Another is anger. When you're angry, people tend to want to placate you and uh, give you information to uh, calm you down a little bit. So I'm going to get angry now. And <laughs> I'm going to make a phone call to... Um, to a video store, and let's see, uh, let's see if they'll give me information they shouldn't give me. Blockbuster? <laughs> Who else? There's only one. Blockbuster 34th Street. Yeah, uh, this is really getting to be too much here. I've, I've got the phone call from Blockbuster saying that I owe money for okay. videos. Okay, can you hold on one second? I have three people in line and I'm by myself right now. I'll be right with you. All right, but this is, this is out of hand. <laughs> All right, well, I, maybe, maybe I'll move to the top of the list. I don't know. Uh, we'll give him a minute to deal with the other angry people and um, <laughs> maybe he'll, uh, he'll come to us faster. Um, I'll listen. I'll listen here, and someone else wants to talk, or we could take questions. <laughs> Use the microphone there, and when we give you the signal to stop talking, because he's back. Uh, I just have a quick question. Do yeah. you feel nervous at all when you're doing this, or are you so used to it that it's just this, comes natural? There's a degree of nervousness because you never know what you're going to walk into. But the thing that to remember is these people can't see you. They, they don't know who you are. I, I'm against lying to people that I know and trust, but I have no problem lying to people who I will never see in my life. <laughs> it doesn't, it's like, you know, they're, they're machines themselves someplace. You know, it, they don't care about you. You don't care about them. As long as you're not hurting them, you know, you're getting them to give information out. Okay, but you're not really using it against them. You're not reporting them and getting them in a lot of trouble, hopefully. Can um, you, you actually prepare for the conversation? In other words, you think about all the, all the objections that the target may have, and you already think about it ahead of time before doing the attack, so you're, you're, you're prepared. If you go in unprepared and you do it extemporaneous, it's, not, it's uh, less likely you'll, you'll succeed, unless the people on the other end are truly gullible. Yeah. No. And now, you know, if, if we hold on with this guy, by the time he gets to us, we're going to be even more angry, so he's going to want to, uh, he's going to, want to really uh, bend over backwards to help us. So um, I'm going to hold on for a couple of minutes longer. And then we'll have to move on if he doesn't come back. Yes, Red Bull. Yeah. Oh, in uh, interesting question. Caller ID. We, we, okay, we'll, we're going to demonstrate something on that uh, as my soon as we, uh, we get through this. Yeah. Yes, Red Bull. My question is, uh, being that the, a lot of these companies like AT&T and, and uh, Visa are shipping their, their customer service people overseas, is there a way to social engineer those people in India or wherever to get them to give you where their location is, what their number is, so that you can maybe bypass and not get connected to them? I just took my MasterCard out of my pocket because I had an experience uh, with them over the past couple of weeks, and I was going to try something like that, so good suggestion. Um, we'll try giving them a call. How many of you have spoken to MasterCard American Express and realized that you're actually speaking to somebody in India or something? Yeah, within good the first phone few seconds too. to figure that out. Yeah. And some of them have Ohio or accents, which yeah, is unbelievable. Um, okay, I'm going to give this guy about 30 more seconds because my thumb's starting to hurt with the mute button. Go ahead. Kevin, in your book, you meant... In your book, you mentioned uh, prepaid cell phones as an excellent, you know, dump number. Right. Are there still prepaid services like Verizon's free up and whatnot, or what are the better ones? Can you still pay with cash? Is that looking like an avenue that's going to close up anytime soon? Well, you can pay with cash. You can you can go to Rite Aid and get a prepaid credit card, a Mastercard. So there there you go. You have cre instant credit card under any name you choose. Um, and with, uh, at least in the LA and the Las Vegas area, you can go to 7-Eleven and buy a prepaid cell phone, 
for probably 50 bucks and buy the cards and you could uh, put it under any service name, any name that you choose. So it's basically could be a throwaway phone. Oh, hi. Sorry yeah. for the wait. Hey, okay. What's the last name on your account? Yeah, uh, last name is Jones. First initial B. Oh, I'm sorry. I, what's the last name? Uh, Jones. J-O-N-E-S. The problem is I just got back from vacation. I'm going through my messages and I hear this thing that, that okay, wait, wait, slow Blockbuster down. owes. Slow, wait, slow down. What's your first name? Uh, initial B. Should be no first name. Initial is just B? Yeah. My wife took out the, the B the Johns. I have an Eric Johns, a Dorothy Johns. Oh, Barry Dorothy. Johnson. Okay, that's my wife, Dorothy Johns. Okay. Now, here's the thing. Uh, we return videos. Uh, I mean, I don't understand why I'm getting phone calls uh, from Blockbuster saying that I owe money for videos that I know we returned. Okay. But they didn't say what video it was. Well, did you get a postcard in the mail? I didn't get a postcard. I got a phone call. Uh huh. And it's it, probably just a reminder saying you have a balance. Uh, let me just pull up the history on this. We this shouldn't have been, a balance. This has been quite a while. I can't even fish out the history. But I, I, we haven't even been taking out videos for quite some time. Yeah. I, I, I don't understand why I'm getting phone calls when we haven't even been to the store. When did you get a phone call? Uh, well, I just got back uh, from vacation uh, this morning, and there were about 50 messages on my machine, and uh, this was one of them. I don't remember the exact time it came in, uh -huh. uh, but, and I don't remember the exact amount either. I think it was, um, it was something on the order of 10 or $20. Yeah, it's a $27 late fee. And I can't, it's weird, it's very odd because I, I'm pulling up, a, I'm trying to hit a history on the computer and it says there's no history records for this customer. I, I don't even remember giving my phone number. That's the thing that bothers me. Well, when you, when you apply for, when you have a, m apply for a membership, your, your information is on the, on the, on a, on your account. Mm -hmm. So that's how well, the, it, and Blockbuster has an automated uh, account maintenance service that does that. It will automatically pull things from a computer and if you have a balance or, uh, if you have something still checked out on an account, it'll, it'll call that number that you list on there for your membership. So you're saying you have that number right there? Yeah, five six four five. I I don't I don't remember giving that number out. So that's okay. Uh, that's, well, yeah, I mean, things must... should be done by mail. That's okay. uh, I, when I signed up for the account. I, I said specifically I just want to get things by mail. I don't want to be getting phone calls, telemarketing, that kind of a thing. Okay. You, you'll have to come in and take a look at the uh, uh, membership application because obviously you signed it and you might not have actually really looked at it. Do you, have, do you have the proper address? Yeah, it's 240. Okay. All right. Um, I, I'm sorry if I appear to be uh, uh, angry here. I just, it's been a long day and I just, um, okay. this is something I just didn't want to have to deal right. with right now. Now, listen, I'm going to have to talk to my store manager about this because... Um, Would you please? I yeah, appreciate that. Yeah, because for some reason I can't research the history and... I, I got. I want to find out what it's for. All right, what, what I'm, I'm sorry. What's your name? My name's Artie. Artie. Yeah. All right, Artie. Thank you very much for being helpful. Okay. All right. All right. Have bye. a good day. Bye. Um, if if there had been a history, we could have uh, gone into what films they would like to to see, but apparently they hadn't used that account for a while. Now, notice I just went in there with the last name. I went in there with a last name and an initial. I used an initial because the odds of finding something with an initial are greater than finding something with the same first name. Um, he started rolling off a list of all the Joneses. So I just picked one, my wife, Dorothy. And you take it from there. And the anger, the anger made him more nervous. He was able to, uh, to bend over backwards to try to please me. And in the end, he feels like he's, he's helped. So no harm done. Uh, okay, we mentioned caller ID. We wanted to try a demonstration with caller ID. Sure. Um, we, we need a volunteer, uh, somebody who will step up, not you, Rebel, uh, somebody, <laughs> somebody who will step up to the microphone and just give us a telephone number that they would like to see a phone call come in from on this telephone here. Can we have this, uh, this camera? Did you want a real phone number? Uh, well, it has to be real phone number format. Why am I not seeing that? Yeah. Okay. Okay. No, that's fine. That's fine. Can everybody see that? There, it's gone. Are you happy? Uh, you don't know how hard this is. <laughs> fine. It's those little it's backwards challenges. Backwards and upside down at our end, so. Okay, uh, and uh, AV people, we're going to need this number to be muted so that uh, they, they don't hear what we're, go we're down here. Okay. Um, actually, why don't you give us the phone number first so we can write that down. Go ahead. And don't give your phone number out. Oh. Well, because we don't want everybody in the world calling you. Right. All right. 
How about 508-619-8342? 508-619-8342? Okay. And this is not staged. We did not arrange this in advance. Should I stay up here? All right. And now I'm going to make the phone call. Should I stay up here, Emmanuel? You can stand up here if you, if you want. Oh. It's not going to make any difference. You're going to get your number on this thing anyway. Uh, actually, it's pulsing. Why is it pulsing? All right, I might, have, I might have messed up the phone. Hang on. In my nervousness, I flipped it to rotary. Okay, can we? The nervous social engineer. I'm nervous, yeah. <laughs> Can't All right, nervous. make sure this is not going out. Okay, can you bring it up now? Please enter the area code and number you are calling now. Okay, can you bring it down for this? Thank you. And up again. Please enter your mask number or the number you should be calling from now. <laughs> Okay, just to just to show that this show was, that in, this fact, was in fact my phone. All right. <laughs> so caller ID is one way that, that you can really uh, get a good social engineering uh, prank going because if someone sees a number on a screen, they're going to believe that you're actually calling from that particular place or office or whatnot. Uh, so it's a great way to gain credibility. And so many people, we proved this two years ago, so many people still believe caller ID is dependable data. It's not. It can be spoofed. Anything can be spoofed. What's what number? It's a secret. That's what that number is. But it's just, it's a demonstration that these things do exist and it is possible and it's easy. I'm going to swallow this now so nobody will get it from me. Um, any, any other? Uh, is Santa Claus on our panel? <laughs> you, want, you want to know how it works? Okay, all right. I can't explain how it works. Okay, there, I'm a member of a telephony community group, and they have the they have the they have the switching equipment there in their facility, and they allow you to uh, write XML code like voice XML. They have uh, call XML, and it's only a, like a 10 or 15 line script that we've written that basically does this. It's really simple, and in the script, it just takes the DTMF that I input through the keypad and just puts it into a field called the caller referral number. And then what it actually does is the number I'm calling to, it does a three-way, essentially. It three ways over, sends the caller referral number, actually sends it to the phone company. That's the number we're actually calling from. Phone company doesn't val validate it. And then it, and then it uh, conferences me in once the call is sent. So it's actually like doing a three-way call, essentially, like a conference call. That's how it's like working technically under the hood. If you have any more questions about it, I'll be happy to answer, except I'm not giving the number out. <laughs> but the number will be available on his website. <laughs> there you go. Okay, I guess uh, we have time for one more, one more try here at something. Um, as we were talking about before, uh, various credit card companies have, um, have employed people in foreign countries to do the work uh, that people here would do for much more money. Um, it's, it's really f kind of frustrating too sometimes when uh, you're trying to get information and uh, there's either a language problem or there's um, uh, just this incredible time difference where it's nighttime there and daytime here. 
Um, it's nice to know where you're calling, and lots of times people don't realize that they're calling different places. It's also weird when you think about it that you're talking to somebody who sounds like they're next door when they're on the other side of the world, and, um, and you know, who's paying for that call? <laughs> sometimes, yes, yeah, sometimes they're in prison, sometimes they're, uh, who knows where they are. You don't know anything about the call centers. So we're going to try and find out a little bit about this particular call center. And I, I have to um, stress that we are calling MasterCard, so sometimes they put you on hold, sometimes they, they uh, just act stupid uh, most of the time. So we're going to call an 800 number, try to get through to an operator, see if we can get information. I think the goal is to find out where they are, and if possible to find out an address even, phone number, something like that. Let's see where it goes. First challenge is getting an operator. You have dialed a number that is not available from your calling area. Oh, they're pulling this on us again? We can't call 800 numbers? Try another one. Try another what? I only have one. I'm going to try this one more time. Okay, I'm going to look into this a little further. I want to make sure I have the right phone number. Talk for a minute while I double check the number. We had a problem. Uh, at our last conference, we had someone uh, figured out what our phone number was here, and they called the phone company in uh, Verizon and had them cancel uh, certain services like long distance and uh, 800 service. So that may have happened. But there's a way around that. We have a, uh, we have a calling card uh, that allows you to call 800 numbers, which is most of them don't. Uh, whenever you call an 800 number, they know the number you're calling from. If you call American Express, 800 number, even if your caller ID is blocked, there's using, there's an, using another service called ANI. ANI. They can tell what number you're calling from, unless you're using a special card like this. This is called the, uh, the red card. You can find them at some of the rental the places you can buy calling cards. Yeah, it's, a great, it's a great way to call for cheap overseas from pay phones and all kinds of things. Uh, okay, so I'm going to try that first. I'm going to try your, your uh, calling card solution here. Uh, we're going to call that access number, enter the code, and try the 800 number, see if that works. If that doesn't work, I'll try the American Express number Kevin has furnished me. Um, so I guess we're oh, gonna Plus I have going. a way, if any of, any of you are interested, to set up a way that when anyone calls you, no matter if they block the number, you can see what number they're calling from, if anyone's interested. So anyone interested? Raise your hands, you're interested in that one. Okay. <laughs> when he gets done, I'll tell you how. Can I get a quick question in real quick? Okay. No. Um, so many service people these days are governed by uh, scripts that they have to follow when they're trying to answer your question. How do you try and get them to break out of that script? Hit a touch tone. <laughs> you have five dollars. Um, maybe the, maybe in the remaining. Okay, Please let's enter the telephone number you wish to dial now. All right, let's try the eight hundred number. You have seven hours twenty-two minutes remaining for this call. That should be sufficient. <laughs> Thank you for choosing the Chase Platinum credit card. Enter your account number. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to hit a zero. This used to work all the time, but it gets harder and harder to reach operators these days. We're sorry. We did not recognize the information. Like times, Enter really. your account number. Yeah, it's a little tussle here. I'm going to do it again. For a faster service from the next available representative, please enter your account number now. She doesn't give up. Okay, I'm going to do it again. If you're a good boy, I'll fix it for you. Please hold for the next available representative to assist you. For a quality purpose, your call may be monitored or recorded. That was payback. Thank you for calling Chase Card Member Services 24-Hour Service Center. All of our representatives are assisting other customers. Please hold for the next available representative. Hello? 
This is Gloria. May I have your account number, please? Uh, actually, I'm not a customer. I'm calling from MCI in New York. We're investigating some uh, troubles with the lines uh, okay. that your call center had reported. Is this, am I reaching uh, Mumbai or am I reaching Canada? Uh, actually, this is in San Antonio, Texas. It's just San Antonio, Texas. Oh, then yes. everything is messed up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do, you have, do you have your call center number, the ID number? Ooh, I sure don't. Don't have that. And my manager's not even here today. Oh dear. I mean, she left earlier. Uh huh. Um, Would you happen to know the the uh, the Mumbai uh, office in India? Do you have that information? No, sir. I certainly don't. Okay. Uh, in that case, uh, can I get a DID for your office? I certainly can. If you can hold one moment, uh, let me get a. Okay, thank you. Supervisor on the line, though, will have more information than what I do, okay? Okay, thank Just you very one much. one moment, certainly. Thank you. Uh -huh. so should I go through the next explanation as we're hold? All right, what you do, all right, there's a service called youreach.com, and you can set up uh, a toll-free number. As You know, it's a uh, cost probably like seven, eight bucks a month. So what you do is you forward your number, say your cell phone number A, cell phone number A, to the UReach number that's created for you, which is a toll-free number. Then UReach has a menu where you can call forward that toll-free number to another number. And do you see what's happening here? What it does is it flips the caller ID privacy bit, because what happens is you set up the target number that they're going to call into, it forwards to the UReach number, which you set up, that UReach number forwards to another number which now will display the caller ID unblocked. Understand? Okay. It's really simple. And it works. Uh, since, since, we're, since we're running out of time here, and since Kevin has to be on an airplane, uh, rather than be on hold with Chase, I'm going to try the American Express. You say that always goes to India? Usually. Okay, we're going to try that instead. So, uh, All right. well, he's, uh, San Antonio is uh, boring. I'm sorry. I, I wanted to speak to somebody overseas. This mic's on, right? This mic on? All right, while he's dialing, uh, just a question for you, uh, Cheshire. While you were doing the, the disguising with the clipboard, going backstage at concerts, have you actually ever gotten on stage? No, that I haven't even attempted. Uh, it's, it's not that hard. I have you ever tried I using a costume? I have not. Oh, okay. No, no, I don't know. Okay, he's on the phone there. Right. Okay, they, they blocked American <laughs> Express, so we have to do the other thing again. Well, hopefully, youreach.com won't uh, take away that feature anymore because it's kind of cool. The only, pr the only problem is, is then you have two numbers you have to deal with, one that you're going to receive the unblocked call on and one that the target is going to call in on. Then again, you could always use Vonage to do it as well, right? Yeah. Tell us about Vonage. Kevin, tell us about Vonage. Well, I, I mean, it's just, uh, I don't know much about it other than, you know, I, I just use it for my voice over IP service. It's relatively cheap. Um, it, the quality of service from my residence isn't the best because I, I, I use the bandwidth a lot. Then, of course, the, the, the single, <laughs> the signal uh, doesn't go through too well. Remaining. Okay, go ahead. Please enter the telephone number you wish to dial now. You have seven hours, 16 minutes remaining for this call. American Express, please have your card available. For balance, recent account activity. American Express, please have your card available. <laughs> Enter the 15-digit card account number now. Not a chance. Do any of you use Vonage, by the way? Okay. Only a few hands, I'm surprised. We did not recognize your cool input. Thing. Enter the 15-digit card account number now. The cool thing is, is you can take the box with you and you can go to Europe, plug it into a broadband connection, and you could have a, a New York number right there. This and you call can call in the United States for, for free. Quality purposes. Your account number may be used to provide customer service and information yeah, about well. available card benefits and services. Hello. 
Hello, my name's Marie, and how may I help you? Uh, yeah, hi, this is uh, Scott Williams from MCI. We're calling in response to a trouble report from your call center. Uh, am I reaching Mumbai or Canada? I'm sorry, actually, this is in Manila, Philippines. This is Manila? Okay, yes. that's the problem. We should be reaching Mumbai. Uh, do you have your call center DID number? That's the direct phone number to it. Um, just one moment. I'll try to get in touch with uh, our IPO department. Would you mind just holding? Thank you. Thank you. Does she sound like she's in the Philippines? She sounds like she's in Texas or something. Notice that Amex records all the calls. You hear the 15 second beep? Oh, they have a 15 second beep? Yeah, yeah. Wait to, yeah. Wait to Just like back. the old days. Yeah. Kevin, when you call someone with Vonage, what shows up on the received parties and uh, caller ID? Wait, what did you say again? I'm sorry, Bernie. When you call someone with Vonage or another voice over IP service, what shows up on the received party? Oh, the, the caller ID that, you're, that they assigned you, the number that they assigned you, that, that caller ID, but you could use it in conjunction with the UReach trick to unblock caller ID. Gotcha. To unblock caller ID blocking. <laughs> There's a dub double negative for you. identification number, I actually don't have that information. But um, let me get the direct number. What number did you try calling? Uh, we came in on the, uh, the 800 through New York. Uh, however, we have a way of routing it to specific call centers so we can troubleshoot when there's a problem. And what we should have uh, gotten when we dialed this particular code was Mumbai. Uh, and instead we got Manila. I have a feeling what this is, is uh, it's offset by one because the, uh, alphabetically they're, they're one right after the other. Uh, so we probably have some database um, a corruption that resulted, uh, that caused this problem to happen. Uh, if that's the case, it's easy to fix, but I just would need to have the direct number so that we can, we can compare it on the list. Okay. As far as you're trying to get in touch with uh, with our customer service department, and this is the, the 1 800 745. If uh, we have gate numbers available, but uh, it also is uh, associated to uh, Manila and New Delhi, we, we need the, the number with the country code and city code. Oh, no, we don't have that information. Um, do you have a, a local number that you can call for a supervisor or uh, when you need to, to reach the call center locally? If you want, I'll connect it to supervisor at Greensboro. They might be able to get you some information. May I have your name again, please? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, Scott Williams with MCI. Scott Williams. And you're just doing troubleshooting? We're trying to, we're trying to isolate the problem because we've been having it throughout the weekend. And uh, we just would like to, uh, uh, to make sure that the lines are going where they're supposed to go. Otherwise, there could be some, some issues. Okay, sure, not a problem. Would you mind just holding for a moment? I'll try to get you connected to supervisor. Thank you very far. much. Thank you. Okay, so uh, while she's doing that, uh, continue with the question. Yeah, what I was saying was... Please you... wait. Go ahead. Yeah, any, anyway, um, if you call the UReach number with star six seven, you can do out calling from that, and it'll show that 800 number as the, uh, as the number that you're calling from. So it's good if you need to pretend you're a business. And second, where can you find those UPS uniforms online? <laughs> no, no, no. If you, if you set up your UReach number and you call forward it to cell phone B and you call forward cell phone A to right, the UReach, I, I and that, that will unblock. Yeah, I know what you're right. saying, but if... No, no, no. False alarm. Oh, okay. Well, but you're you, saying if you just do a star 67. No, I'm saying if you want to pretend to be like a business or something and you're calling somebody to solicit some kind of information, it works well because you're coming from an 877 or 800 number, something like that. Oh, I see, okay. Yeah. That's another good one. And it's pretty cheap, so it's all good. Yeah. Well, thank you for that, for that information. <laughs> all right, Kevin, Kevin's gonna have to leave pretty soon, so I'm hoping, this, no, she said please wait again. They say please wait every now and then. You, uh, should, you should ask her what number she calls when she's late for work. That's <laughs> what I was trying to do. I was trying to ask her that, that information. Or but. she has to call in sick. Sometimes it doesn't work. You know, sometimes you don't get the information that you want, and sometimes they protect. You know, it's really, it's not something that you would think they would protect that, that, um, that aggressively. It's just their location, phone number. <coughs> and uh, we already know their location. We know they're in Manila. 
So uh, ideally what I'd like to get is the address, the call center number, the phone number, uh, but uh, who knows what's going on over there. Manila, does anybody know what time it is in Manila? It's pretty damn late or something. Uh, so that could be a long wait. Let's. You might want to suggest to the uh, supervisor that their call volume may go through the roof. Yes, go ahead. Hello? Yes, oh. Mr. Rowland. Sorry about a delay. I have a supervisor on the line, Mark, but uh, he'll try to get some information for you, but uh, he cannot guarantee yet. So All right, just, like if you can just give me what you have, it would, it would help us tremendously in the troubleshooting. We just need to know a, a, uh, any kind of DID or even the address would help us just find it in a database, and that way we could, we could stop the problem from continuing. Hello, Mr. Williams. I'm sorry? Hello, is it Mr. Williams I'm speaking with? Yes, Guy Williams, MCI. Hello, this is Mark at American Express. I understand you're actually doing some troubleshooting, right? We're trying to find out uh, why calls that are supposed to be going to Manila are going to Mumbai instead. Hmm. Uh, we think it might be offset by one, uh, and what we can do is we can isolate this by uh, looking, the, looking up the correlating numbers in the database. Um, we have Mumbai, um, but we don't have Manila. Is there any kind of information you can give us? A call center number even would be helpful. Well, I think the best thing I can actually do, can I place you on hold? I think the thing I need to do is have a word with our, with our phone operations management desk and see if I can get you a, a specialist in that area because they'd be able to answer the question. Okay, would you, would you just be able to give me an address? Uh, uh, that, because we probably have that information as well. An address? Yeah, just the, the address of the call center so that way we can look in the database because, because, the, because you've ended up back now in Greensboro, which is 7701 Airport Centre Drive in Greensboro. But as to where Manila, where the, the physical addresses in Manila and Mumbai are, I don't know. Are, are you in Manila right now? No, I'm not. I'm in Greensboro. Are you in Greensboro? Was I just speaking to Manila? You were, yes. Oh, so they transferred me over to, to Greensboro. Right. So that's what I was hoping to avoid because now <laughs> we're, we're crossing the planet again. Um, all right. So you, do you have a, a direct dial number at all for in Manila or Mumbai? I don't know. That's, that's why I need to have get uh, Mr. Williams to bear, bear with me so I can get you to somebody who does know because I simply do not know. Okay. My specialist is dealing with accounts, not phone situations. Okay. Bear, bear with me, please. All right, thank I, you. I'll see what we can do. Thank you. Picking up a pizza, ordering a sandwich. Right, as, or as you can see, it's a big, long Remember journey around the world sometimes to get information from these people. But um, if, they, if they give us the information in a timely manner, we'll uh, be able to, to get it here. Yeah, it's not like the movies where everything happens like one, two, three. Sometimes you have to be really patient and things take a long time. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes it doesn't work at all. Sometimes yeah. you get busted. I mean, uh, it's happened to us all. Where well, not me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if I can close off the panel by reminding people that we have just been social engineered because Santa Claus was not scheduled to be on this panel today. Sometimes you want to be on stage. <laughs> And he has social engineered his way onto the stage. Okay, we're going to put a two-minute limit on this because we do have other people that have to get on here at 5. Um, that's 5.12 right now. Yes, hello. Hello, I have the operations desk to help you further. Okay. Yes, can I help you? Uh, yeah, hi, Scott Williams from MCI. We've just been trying to isolate a problem that uh, was reported in Mumbai for, uh, for routing calls. Apparently the problem was that uh, the 800 was going to Manila when it should have been going to Mumbai and um, we're just trying to locate the circuits here. Okay, let me actually get um, our CCM department online. They're actually who you need to talk to. Can you hold for me? You don't have a DID, do you? Because that's all we need. I don't even know what you're referring uh, direct, to. I'm sorry, a, a direct dial number for Manila. That way we can just look it up in our, in our lookup table in the database and just make sure it's correlating properly. I don't know. Let me get CCM on the line. Can you hold for me? Okay, thank you. Well, we're getting a nice little tour of American Express at least, so. It's not, it's not unusual to go through six, seven, eight, nine, ten levels of supervisors before you really reach the information you need. You really have to persevere. Yeah, I forgot to ask him what part of the planet he's in. Who, who knows where he is? <laughs> he might be in New York. <laughs> With the new American Express rewards cards, you'll be automatically enrolled in our membership Why are they playing rewards me program stuff? and earn double points at the well, places you shop every uh, day. Uh, Thank you for holding. I have you a centralized call management. Hello. Hello. Yes. Who am I speaking with? Ms. Sterling. Hi. This is Scott Williams from MCI. We're just trying to isolate the problem in New York that was reported in Mumbai, uh, where we're, uh, the calls are being routed uh, improperly. 
Uh, and uh, we think we can solve this just with the DID from either Mumbai or Manila. Do you have that information? Um, it, I'm sorry, I'm not aware of a problem with the routing. Yeah, what's happening is that uh, calls that are supposed to be going to Mumbai are going to Manila and vice versa. It's, it's not affecting customers, but uh, it is affecting uh, when, when the lines are getting tied up, they're going to the wrong place. And you might get some circuits busy as a result of that. Uh, we can probably fix this just by having the DID number and correlating it to the, the 800. So either a DID from um, Mumbai or a DID from Manila would be helpful. Um, I don't have the DIDs for those. I have an IPO number. That's as far as we would contact. Okay, why don't you give me that? Okay. Which one do you want? Uh, if you can give them both to me, that would, that would be more helpful, I think. Okay, do you have a ticket number on this? Not yet. We haven't opened the ticket because we don't think it's going to be a, um, an issue that needs to uh, uh, be resolved that way yet. Uh, this has just been reported in the last half hour. Okay, and what is your name again? Uh, Scott Williams, MCI in New York. Who am I speaking with now? This is Darlene. And where are you located? In CCM in Greensboro. Okay. Okay. If you'll hang on one second, I'm going to put you through to the Mumbai IPO um, because I have it on a group list and it's a speed dial. Okay. That would be okay? great. Thank All you. All right. Just a moment. I, I really thought I was busted there for a second. I thought What's she was asking who I was. Number? I thought she was going to say, there's no Scott Williams at MCI. And <laughs> but she's apparently transferring me now to, you know to Mumbai, which, by the way, used to be called Bombay, and they changed it for some reason. When they ask for a ticket number, you can't just make one up either because there, there are usually a set number of digits. So it was good that he averted the whole question of ticket number because if he just made up a number off the top of his head and it was the wrong number of digits, he would have been busted. So he handled it the right way. Yeah, you want to you want to avoid giving the wrong information. Better that you cloud the issue and just uh, change the subject somehow without them realizing what you've just done. Or you try to find out the format of the trouble ticket numbers ahead of time. Hello. Thanks for holding. I've got the IPO online for you. Okay. They've got a local telecom person there today in the site. Oh, great. Uh, if you need to speak with them, I'll just drop you off into their site and let you get transferred over to the telecom. That would be great. Thanks so much for your help. You're welcome. Mumbai? Hi, Mumbai. Yes. Uh, uh, right, sir. I'm, I'm there. I would just need to connect you to one of the person in the telecom department. Okay, from thank the you. technology technology department, and uh, they can assist you with that. Okay. So, uh, pl please be online while I transfer the call, sir. I'm sorry. Uh, please be online. I'll transfer the call. Thank you. You're this is what nine or ten transfers we've gone through now. You have to do this sometimes. We have something like six or seven people working on this now, and I don't even know what this is. <laughs> I just want to announce that the, uh, the next panel, the uh, media intervention via social and technical hacking, ha te media intervention via social and technical hacking uh, will be a full hour right after this is over. We just have to push things back. So thanks for waiting. It took us this long to screw up the schedule, so I guess it's okay. It's worth seeing, so I recommend you stay. Any other questions as we're waiting on hold with American Express? Yeah, questions been asked. Please try to keep it down back there because it's kind of hard to explain to people why there's a crowd uh, on a phone call. Please ask questions so it doesn't appear so dull. How many people here consider themselves social engineers? At one point or another, they've done it. Everyone raise your hands. Wow. Oh, that's it? Come on, everybody raise their hand. If you haven't done it yet, it's, it's, as long as you keep it safe, it's just a fun thing sometimes. Come on, you social engineered all your parents before. Come on. All those hands should be up. 
It's a good skill to have because you can get into places that you need to get into. Can I, can I social um, engineer the telemarketers when they call? Like what? pretend that I'm like somebody else. So that How would you social? No. Hello? No, no, no. Hello? Somebody there? Okay, I thought I heard something. Um, there was something? What did they say? And that wasn't me? Hello, is anybody there? That was me. <laughs> Bouncing back from Mumbai. Read my lips. Uh, the, the question was, uh, can you social engineer telemarketers? I'm not sure exactly what, how, what would you want them to believe about you, that you're a psychopath or something? Yeah, you, got the, <laughs> you got the telephone butler, right? So that, so that they'll, they'll, you could convince them that they're calling the wrong number and so that they could take you off the list. They don't care about that. They'll call whatever number of their auto dialer dials. The thing is, you don't want to piss them off too much because sometimes they're calling for maximum security prisons because they give the work out to, to inmates. And they have your number and they have your address and maybe they'll get out someday. So, right. Apart from this, uh, you tell a marketer. Hello. Uh, yes, sir. I'll ju I'm just answering the call. I'm sorry, I'm having trouble hearing you. Uh, I'm just answering the call now. Uh, could you just speak a little lower, please? Okay, I'm so sorry. I'm transferring the call to our department now. Okay, thank you very much. You're right. Or as I was saying, uh, there's a large segment of the population that can't say no to a telemarketer. Uh, hello, who am I speaking with? Imran, you? Hi, this is Scott Williams over at MCI in New York. We're just trying to troubleshoot the problem that was reported. Uh, and all we need is a DID or an IPO from Mumbai. Can you repeat your name? Uh, yes, yeah, Scott Williams, MCI. Uh, the problem is that uh, calls are being misrouted from New York, uh, and they're going to Manila instead of Mumbai. You might have noticed mm -hmm. a drop-off, uh, and we can probably fix it with a DID number, which is the direct telephone number for the call center. Mm -hmm. Do you have that information? You need the circuit ID for that. I need the country code, city code, and telephone number for the call center, yes. Our call center? Yes. This or not? Thank you. Hello? Yes. Yeah, our direct number is 310. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, 312955? 310. I'm sorry, 310955. 1234. 1234. Our extension is 23313. And uh, I'm sorry, what's the country code and city code? Okay, you need the direct number, not an IPLC number. Yes, the direct number. Yeah, I'll provide you the number. And uh, I'm not getting your name. Can you spell your name? Yes, uh, Scott, S C O T T, Williams. S -C O-T-T? S-C-O-T-T, -T, Scott. Okay. Williams. Scott Williams. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, Williams, W-I-L-L-I-A-M-S. With M-C-I. Scott, so just hold for a moment. Okay, we just need that number. That's 310-955-1234. Uh, no problem. No problem. Um, it, that's, that's our IPLC number. Let's see. It's 23313. Okay. Right now we are talking on an IPLC number, right? Okay. All right. Thank you. You need it. Thank it you very do. much. This right. number will do. I'm sorry. This number will do. Uh, well, we uh, we just need a number that is directly dialable in India. Yeah, it's directly dialable in India. Okay. So what? Uh, what is the city code in Mumbai? It's uh, for Mumbai. It's two zero two two. Zero two two. Yeah. Okay, and you dropped the zero from overseas, correct? I'll, I'll give you one, one more number. Okay. It's a direct number. All it's right, that'd be good. Nine one, nine one. Nine one nine one. Nine one. No, it's just nine one once. Okay. Nine one two two. Okay. Five six nine seven. Okay. Four seven. Okay. Seven one. That's nine one two two five six nine seven four seven seven one. Yeah. 
Okay, this should be enough to fix the problem. What's your name again? Look, Imran. All right. I M R A N. Thank you so much for your help. Yeah, no problem. Good night. Yep. Good night. I don't know what that number actually is. I think it's a phone number, but I'm going to try calling it later. See yeah, if we you should can... call forward to it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess if you ever want to really, uh, you know, cut some time and get to American Express quickly, directly in India, and pay a premium rate for it too, you can always dial that number. Okay. A couple of questions, and then we have to uh, we have to quickly get going. Yeah. Dur during these calls, I hear a lot of in-band signaling. Do you think you should be you could be generating those tones to switch you to a supervisor who can solve your problem? That's a whole other uh, topic there. But yeah, they do use in-band signaling in many parts of the world still. Boxing is still popular and possible. Go ahead. I found one of the hardest things when I make some of these phone calls is when I'm stuck at a dead end and there's a piece of information I'm missing and I have to back out of a call. Mm -hmm. And I was really hoping that you'd fail somewhere, but you didn't because I wanted to see how you would approach backing out of a call. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but... Um, <laughs> maybe maybe I you have, could share with us a couple stories. No, I have failed happened. and a good way to, to uh, you know, if you're pursuing some information... Can you hold on a second, please? I'm getting another call. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to call you back. Um, or... Yeah, you know, something like I that, do. or, well, or you simply, you make it hard to hear. You, you do something to your voice so that they can understand you. I'll call you back on a better line. Uh, or, you know, you worst comes to worst, you just hang up and start over again in a few hours when they have a well, shift the problem change. is solved. You don't mm -hmm. need the help anymore. All right, thank you. Yeah. All right. Last question, and Kevin's really got to take off. Well, just a quick comment. Uh, if you're dialing a 1-800 number and you don't want them to see your caller ID, you can uh, dial 10-10-2880 before and just dial an 800 that way, and it causes an anti fail. I don't know if that always works it, anymore. It, every time I've tried it, it, it does. used it to. It depends worked. where you're calling from. Uh, there are lots of other ways to uh, opt divert and, uh, yeah. and and block your number from being from being transmitted. There's a toll-free number that you cannot be called from payphones. One eight hundred five 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 tell, which is, um, and if you try and call from a payphone, it does not work. But if you dial one zero two eight eight zero, wait for AT and T to say please enter the number you want to call. Dial eight hundred five five five, and it'll just work. Okay. All right. We're out of time, folks. Thanks so much. And let's thank Kevin for being here. He's got to take off right now. He's, uh, his airplane leaves in about an hour and a half. So Bye, thanks, everybody. Kevin, for being here. See you next week. And don't forget, Taco Bell. Nine o'clock. And don't do anything I wouldn't do. We want video.